Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video build series and something a little bit different. We're going to do a civil airliner and today, part number one, we're going to get going on Tavez's beautiful Boeing 737-800. Richie here, welcome back from a brand new video build series. I'm super excited because we're going to do a civil airliner. It's the best of beautiful 737-800. Now, spoiler alert, I don't know what livery, what airline I'm going to use this yet. Um, I've ordered a few decals and I'm going to wait for it to arrive and kind of make the decision later on. So, I do build all these videos and edit them first before I put them up on YouTube. So, by the time this does go live, obviously it'll be finished and I will know the airline. So, I'll put it in the description below if you guys are wondering. Um, but... Yeah, going back to my roots, um, I ever since I was a little kid, I loved civil aviation. That's what got me into the airliners. That's my true, real passion. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but even a lot of people who like follows my channel for a long time, probably don't realize that RW Hobbies, I'm actually an owner of an e-commerce store. RW Hobbies is a store online um, dedicated to civil aviation and really um, die cast and, and kind of like plastic airliner models, like pre-built. So like like this guy, for example, I just sold, um, this is an order that needs to be packed up and go out um, to somebody. Um, this is a Frontier Airbus A320 from Gemini Jets and 400 scale, like these kind of guys. Um, you get the 200 scale stuff too. So I don't make a big deal up my channel. Actually, I don't, first, this is the first time I mentioned it in years. Um, the channel started out as a kind of a sideline to kind of bring people to my, my online commerce store, eat RW Hobbies, obviously. Um, and if you go back to my content from eight years ago, or five years ago, whatever it may be, um, it was terrible. I think I got a video about different air scales of these guys. Um, it's terrible lighting, terribly produced in a cell phone, cringe worthy, but I've got like 90,000 views on that thing. It's unbelievable. Um, I've got a few unboxings of those kind of airliners. I got a lot of videos where I just traveling around, um, flying to take off some landings in, in um, various US airports and stuff too. So that's kind of where the channel started. Um, and then it, it kind of paused for a few few years and then it kind of took off about two years ago at the time of filming this. I got back, well, I've been modeling for a while, but I kind of want to make it my own personal modeling channel. So I took, I kept the channel, the subscribers as RW Hobbies. So a lot of those guys were um, civil aviation fans. And um, I just molded it into my own modeling channel. So it kind of changed but if you, hopefully you guys know have seen like i don't publish my e-commerce store or kind of, it's not about that now it's my own really kind of my private kind of like modeling blog vlog kind of thing so that's kind of like my roots so that's why i'm so excited to start get back to civil aviation so i still build in my military jets and um still got stuff behind me you probably see as well but I just want it's nice now again just kind of break it up and do a little bit kind of something different so if you don't know much about these guys, um, Sylvester is like, I've done a review of this one. As I said in the review, this is basically a Tamir of airliners. Great kits, um, as you'll see as I build this. Nice detail, nice plastic, go together well. Ravel or the other players in town, um, typical Ravel would be a little flashy, a little bit more difficult to build. Quality not quite as nice. And then you got like the likes of like Eastern Europe places, like companies kind of like um, Eastern Express, AMP, um, all those kind of Eastern, yeah, all those kind of, well, they're basically short run kits and they're gonna be a real handful to put together. Um, I did the AMP MD11, that was a nightmare. It was like three mil gaps in every single part, basically. Um, but Svesta, well known airline kits. One foot one to one four four scale standard with these guys. Um, and as you see with narrow body 737, A320s, that kind of thing, they're really nice size and like easy display. Um, well, when you get into like the bigger guys, like, triple sevens and the um, A three fifties and stuff, they get they're huge. They're like massive. So, um, yeah, really good kits and really good price point too. Like this kit is literally, I think, under twenty five dollars. You can even get probably get an Amazon Prime. We're easily available. Any of these investor kits, um, been out a few years now and easy to get hold of. Um, no problem at all. You get aftermarket decals anywhere. Go, go Google online. You, any airline you want, you can pretty much do. Like I said, I've got a couple of different versions coming. I just wanted to check them out before I commit to doing a certain delivery. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty much going to be the same. My white joke is going to be a white fuselage. just going to be painted the same. And then just the decals will go on um, pretty much like that. But yeah, really nice kits. So this will be a few parts. There's not too much to this. Um, the main points I want to touch on with this video build series is the seam line on the top, fixing that. Um, filling the windows, which a lot of people have questions and ask about. So I'm going to fill the windows in and use decals. And um, that's really it. And we're just going to build it straight out of the box. No aftermarket, no photo etch or anything. Um, and it make a good model. So these, you can 
pretty much build in like a weekend weekend project really um if you're into like building like the shiny cars and you like aircraft this is a perfect segue for you guys because it's all the same skills glossy paintwork decals not thousands of little tiny parts and stuff so i think this is right up the alley of people who build cars too um the only thing is just putting that seam line on the top which isn't too bad to take care of to be honest with you um and that's pretty much it so let me kind of just open this box so it's, it's a kind of nice vest box kit so you get this like you get a normal box and you get a really sturdy kind of cardboard box inside it and this is nice to kind of keep your project in so i mean you can keep it where you build it keep all your parts and stuff in here it's, i think it's kind of cool so again i did a review of this but just it gives you an idea of size so that's a fuse large halves that's your wingspan so i think my i think it's like 10 and a half inches long and it's about nine eight and a half nine inches wingspan it will be um so not too much you got basically got the wing halves um the wing section the fuse large halves you get stand if you do the flight i'll be doing it wheels down on the ground um but there's your stand if you want to do that um get do you get windows rebel you don't get windows you just have gaps here you do get windows if you want to go mask them all or whatever but um again i'm gonna fill them use decals i think and just a couple more sprues, um, the engines and basically the gear and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, enough waffling, let's get going to build now. So let me um, clear down my desk, um, get the stuff out, and we'll start working and getting that main fuselage put together. All right, let's get started. So let me kind of show you the sprues real quick. Again, I've done a review on the channel and look at detail, but this is the main fuselage. You get an idea of size, that nice kind of, you know, easy to work with size it's not huge it's not tiny it's i think it's a nice useful you know nice that nice kind of foot long kind of perfect kind of modeling size for a kit um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus as i mentioned on the getting these two parts together basically um the main fuselage so look at the instructions here it's pretty straightforward it's just one piece of paper that's it um, so the front's just the layout of your sprues and a few little you know information one we're looking at getting the um the wings together and there's absolutely crazy rain outside right now, so if you can hear that, um, sorry if you hear the background noise. Um, getting the two halves together, which we're working on, basically number two is what we work on today. Gear, um, as with any aircraft model I build, I'm not going to put the gear on right now. I'm going to wait till this thing is fully painted and weathered and add the gear at the very end. And um, working along on the engines and main gear. Putting on the stand, if you're doing that with the gear up, we're going to obviously going to do the gear down and decals, but we're not going to use these decals, we're going to use our own aftermarket ones. So that is pretty much it. So let's talk a little bit about windows um, in general for airliners. The kind of standard and kind of scale modeling airliner world is to fill them and use decals. Um, there's no interior on these cabins. Um, and the way again just the way just to just to fill them so the best way best filler you can use is milli putts now i have looked around my desk i can't find any i do have some somewhere but milli putt is a product um it's basically a two-part kind of putty you mix together and um, they do various different types i use the white super fine and basically what you can do is you can roll like a little sausage out and stick it through these windows so it all kind of oozes out and then with a knife just kind of scrape off all the excess let it dry overnight and then sand back and you have a perfectly seamless kind of fuselage here with like no window showing at all. That's what you do with rail kits. With Zvesta, we don't necessarily have to do that because we have these window inserts. So what we can do is we can glue these in as you would normally and um, just fill from the outside and then we'll sand back. So that's the way we're gonna do it. Um, if you did want to use these windows, what I guess what I'd, how I'd do it would be would be to spray the fuselage color around this first, which would probably be usually the white. Spray that whole like you know this whole band. Put these windows in, and then mask it over the top. So paint the whole thing. Then you have to mark. Then you have to do every single window individually. Um, the third way, I guess, is the, the old micro crystal clear, where he's going to no windows at all at the very end. He's going to dip a toothpick in here, and then just kind of pick out each window and then as the PVA glue dries it will dry clear. Um, I don't use this stuff anymore 
I much prefer this guy, which is Mod Podge. Super gloss, brilliant extreme. Um, this is awesome. Any kind of glass things or like instrument panels or cockpits, that kind of stuff. This dries perfectly clear and high gloss. So if I was going to do windows um, clear, i will probably use the Mod Podge, that one. And just again, same principle, just dip it in and then just dip each window. And then it's going to dry perfectly um, like glassy. And now I'm thinking about it, it might be a good option to do in the future maybe. But there we go, so that's the window, kind of explain the windows. Um, nose weight, so 10 grams, which is um, half, 10, well half an ounce is 14 grams. So here in the US, um, we use grams, not metric. So I basically need half an ounce, um, which I'm gonna use these guys, which uh, I've talked about them before, but basically just basic cheap fishing weights. I go to my local Walmart store and I get a bag of these for like a dollar, I get about six in a bag. I have quarter ounce, half ounce, and one ounce, depending on the size. Um, as this guy is, needs 10 ounces, which again, um, half, sorry, 10 grams, which is um, 14, 10, 10 grams, I'm gonna use a um, half ounce, which is 14 grams, just extra, a little bit extra weight. And all you're gonna, all you're gonna do is, we'll, I'll go show you when I get there, but basically I'm gonna add a little super glue and just super glue this in like that. And it's gonna um, get the perfect weight so it's not gonna tip over, you know, tail heavy, it's gonna be, Sit down the ground, sit down nicely, and plus it gives a nice little weight to the model too, an extra half an ounce. Um, so that's yeah. So again, go to your local Walmart store, pick up fishing weights, super cheap, and um, it work you know work great. Just get different sizes, and um, you'll be good to go. So that's kind of me talking through this and waffling way too much. So let's get building. So I'm going to start cutting these parts out and getting these windows in and um, the nose gear, and I'll be right back. Right. So back and so. I've done the windows, no problem at all, just glued them on the inside. Um, went ahead and glued the nose weight and added the nose bay, the wheel bay right there. So did the windows, no problem at all on both sides, but now I want to fill it. So I was going to glue them both together. But I thought, you know what, it's probably better just to fill these windows right now and take care of it and then we'll put it together afterwards. So I did add some masking tape just around them just to protect on the panel lines. Um, so I don't have to worry about sanding too much and that kind of stuff and rescribing later. So. Another thing to note is too, but I cut these off the sprues. I didn't sand them down. Yep, I'm gonna, they don't foul it, it's just on the top. So I wanna put this together first. And then I'm gonna sand it afterwards. So that's a top tip, because then that means that the sand is not, if you do one half and you're not perfectly straight, you're gonna take grooves and stuff out. So if you do it when you glue together, it's gonna be a lot easier. So I haven't touched these attachment points yet. I just literally cut them off the sprue colors and like I said, once I said, um, as I said, should I say, um, once it's glued, then we'll go ahead and sand those down and take care of them. So, Milliput, an airliner modeler's best friend. So, this is stuff talking about super fine. You can buy any kind of craft store. I think here in the US, I think maybe Hobby Lobby has them or Michaels, um, those kind of places. You get them online. Amazon has them. Different types. I use the super fine white. And what you find in boxes, you have two basically sausages a like yellowy one and a white one. And Basically, one's a hardener and one's the actual putty. You need to kind of knead it in your hands. And as you see, I'm wearing nitro, nitro gloves because this stuff is very messy. Um, it just sticks to your fingers and it's, it's a nightmare. So you see ready here, just my glove. So equal parts, you don't need tons of stuff. I'm just gonna fill the windows in. So I've got equal parts and all you're gonna do then is just knead it and make it in your hands and get it really well mixed. Um, I've done this before where I've not done it enough and I paid because it just never dried and that's to get rid of it all and do it all again. It was a nightmare. So you're just gonna really work in your hands. Again, you can see why I'm using these gloves because I don't want to sell my fingers. And get it hard and mixed out throughout the thing. And we're gonna go for about 30 seconds or so. Just make sure this thing is really well mixed to get mixed up the hardener and the putty. Okay, and it says on the box it, it dries two to three hours. Um, so we'll see. And typically, I normally have to leave this thing overnight. So I'm just going to break a piece off. Literally just going to make. I don't need much at all. because Okay, so I'm literally just going to go on the outside here. I 
and just smoothing it out. Now the thing with this is, I don't want to go too much because the more you put on, the more you'll sand off, right? So you don't want to sand tons of this. I could probably wet sand this too in the kitchen sink would be easier, I think, with the mess. So I just want to cover all those windows. Again, just really kind of smoothing this thing out. I don't want tons of this stuff. Okay, like that. So, I'll go ahead and do the other side. Like, like I see, I don't need much at all. The other way, which I think that's easier now I'm thinking about is, is just you roll the sausage up, push it through the inside, and it pops through the edge and just cut it off. That's a way easier way of doing this, I think. But hey, there you go. We'll learn for next time, but. Let's make my sausage. Try and keep it down to a couple of mils worth of thickness because again I don't want to spend six hours running for my sanding sticks getting all the stuff off so the less you put on the better for this and you see now why well, I put tape on too just to kind of protect the um, some of these power lines and stuff Actually, have all this left over, so this is going to harden. There's nothing you can do with this now. Um, that's done. But again, just checking this a couple of little gaps. There we go. So again, two to three hours, put a package. We'll see, I'll come back in two or three hours to see how we're doing. Um, if not, most probably overnight would be the best way to leave this and come back and then we'll take the tape off and sand all this down. Um, so cool, that's me filling the windows. Nothing too exciting there, but um, just kind of show you how we're using the put. So that, again, you can see my fingers on here, how I, why I use these gloves, because that's just a um, hot mess on there. Cool, all right, I'll be right back once this is dried. All right. It was dry, so it's been about five hours ish, and you can tell this bit left over. Hit that rock hard. So, did this side, um, <laughs> core sanding stick, just working it, and it pretty much took all of it off, which I wanted, other than see around the, with the windows, which is filled it, so that should be fine. So, fingers crossed, it's going to be perfectly good. And I don't mind the odd little kind of um, window showing through because you can cover it with decals and help me line it all up and stuff, I guess. But I don't know. It's a lot of work sanding all that stuff away. I mean, I think it's a lot easier going from the inside without these glass windows, just putting the inside and just sanding off a little bit on the edge. I think it's way easier that way. Um, but I guess we'll see once we get primer on how it looks, if it really, really, um, if it is really kind of um, gone away completely or not, I guess we'll figure out. So did that side, obviously, this side got left to do. So what I did this was, I'm not gonna move my camera over there, but kitchen sink, um, put water running, and just wet sanded it. Sanded it, and then peeled away all, the, all this stuff to leave like the white like, bar, and just sanded it basically. So I got to that stage, and then came back with a polishing sponge, which I don't have with me, but polished, and then polished away any scratches and stuff. And we actually do have all the seam lines and stuff still intact. Not seam lines, sorry, the um, panel lines and stuff. So it did seem to work somewhat, I guess. Um, cool. So, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'm, we'll, as this goes on, next couple of parts, we get this together with some paint on, I guess we'll know for sure. But just off the bat, it just seemed like a lot of work. But if it does do a great finish, then, hey, maybe it's worth that extra work. But I'm going to go ahead now and just start working on this side. Um, again, just shred through my sanding sticks and get rid of all this naughtiness. And um, hopefully the other side will turn out just like that. 
All right, so it's been like 30 minutes or so, and it's just dried off now from that water from the wet sanding. So we put the two sides together. Um, what I'm going to use for this is I don't use extra thin because it just evaporates and dries too quickly. We're going to use the um, Tamiya cement. So it's this guy or this one, exactly the same, just come in different bottles depending on where you are in the world. But um, size-wise, actually, how many milliliters are in here? Um, 20 mil, 40 mil. Okay, it's actually double the size. I didn't realize that. So. Um, yeah, same product. Um, so we'll go ahead. Um, what I do do is uh, I switch the brush out. The white one's too big. I, I just put, I use the extra thin brush, um, which is actually a much smaller brush and it fits perfectly. The brush, the whole top just fits the same on these. So I'm just gonna smear it all around and then we're gonna put this thing together and um, we should be good to go. Okay, I'm just going to line these guys up. There are some tabs. And then what I'm going to do too is, I'm just going to run some extra thin just down the, the well just to help it stick a little bit more better too. A little bit more better, that's terrible English. A little bit better. Um, and this just doesn't get into those cracks and stuff. It's going to evaporate, be no problem at all. Really, I'm just putting a little extra thin and just using my fingers to hold it in place and it's gripping really well actually. So it's good news when it comes to taking seam lines and stuff. I think it's going to, it's doing really good. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm going to leave this to dry for an hour or two just to let it set up real good. Um, and actually I'm going to end the video here. So I'm going to end the video just putting this part together. I think we're a good, good start point. Did a lot of work on this one. And we'll come back next time and we'll take care of the seam line at the top, which shouldn't be so bad because it's looking really well, this plastic with the Tamiya extra thin cement and the um, the thick cement we use too. So again, I'm just going to make sure this sets up in a good spot and um, it's working this. And we'll be back next week. So thank you as always for watching. Hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.